Hello and welcome to my beginner's guide to Disney Dreamlight Valley. Now before we get started, I would like to note that these are just suggestions and I am not trying to tell you how to play your game. You should absolutely play it however you want to play it, whatever gives you the most joy. But if you are just starting out and would like some tips, then this is the video for you. To start off with, my first recommendation for starting this game out is something that I didn't know until much later. As you open up new biomes, I'm going to run down to the Glade of Trust um, just to show you guys. But as you open up new biomes, it is possible to move your well to get over to the places that you are otherwise unable to get to until you upgrade certain items. So to start off, once you open certain biomes, for example, the glade, there are going to be large mushrooms on this path and on the path that is at the bottom of the glade. And you can't get past those mushrooms until you upgrade your watering can, which I believe is a Merlin quest. But in order to get around that, we have a little hack. And it's not really a hack because the devs have even suggested doing this as well. You can literally go to your furniture, pick up your well, and move it to the other side of the glade. Just place it anywhere you have an open space and then you go to your map and you fast travel to it and it will bring you to the other side of the biome that you cannot get to because of the mushrooms or if you're in the sunlit plateau there are some bones in the way and if you are in the frosted area there are some icebergs or glaciers in the way that you can't otherwise get to the other side. So moving the well absolutely helps in those situations because there are times during quests where you have to get to the other side of the biomes in order to get specific items for quests or if you just want items to help you start decorating. That leads me to the next little tip that I have. For those of you who do not know, if you go into your map, you can actually teleport to the castle realms. So if you go up to the castle, you just click on it and you can teleport to any of the realms that you have unlocked. So just to give you an example, I'm going to go to Ratatouille's realm and it will fast travel me to the realm so you don't have to run all the way up to the castle. And then once you exit, it should place you exactly where you were before you fast traveled to that specific realm. The third suggestion I have for today is to hoard literally everything that you pick up in the game. And the reason why I'm saying hoard everything is because there are several quests where you need to give characters a whole bunch of items. And I'm looking at you, Minnie. 200 clay is absolutely ridiculous. But I have different chests for different items. Like I have a little fish area. I have a little flower area. I have all of my gems. And then I have like craftable items as well as materials over in this chest over here. Now, I don't think that we necessarily have to hoard a whole chest worth of items. But I personally do like to have a whole entire stack of 50 or a stack of 99 when it comes to the food items. And I just kind of keep those in my chests in case new quests pop up and characters want a ridiculous amount of those materials. Um, I'm also holding on to dream shards and night shards as well and we have some dream shards that are not supposed to be in that chest and then I have um, some miscellaneous items uh, as well just for kicks and giggles. This leads me to my fourth suggestion and that is to grind the dreamlight duties that show up in your daily tab under the dreamlight duties. These are 
very easy tasks to do. Um, I currently have feed a critter, take a picture, sell two meals, prepare two meals, bring two gifts, and change my outfit. And these are very easy tasks to do in order to get dream light. If you grind these for even 30 minutes, you can get a couple thousand dream light just from doing these. I don't suggest using the dream shards, which um, are these. It looks like the lighter version of the night shards. I don't suggest using these in order to get dream light because these are used for certain quests and starting off your game you will need these for quests and i don't think it's a good idea to switch these into dreamlight just because you want to get into another realm you will come across these by clearing night thorns and digging the holes that pop up in your valley and feeding critters so they're are ways to grind collecting these but as you're starting out probably hold on to these because you will need them for quests so my oh, next tip you. that i am going to give you is based off of leveling characters i have heard a lot of stories about folks having trouble leveling both ursula and ariel because you cannot make them buddies in any way when it comes to fishing, farming, digging, mining. You can't make them a buddy and that is one of the easiest ways to level up your characters. But I am here to give you a little tip on how to level them up in the quickest way possible. I have found out that gifting them either gems or flowers is the best way to level these characters up. Now, I didn't want to get rid of my gems because one, they sell for a lot, and two, there are quests where characters need gems. So I picked up all of the flowers in my valley, and I sat there and I gifted flowers to both Ursula and Ariel, and in no time they were both oh. leveled up to oh. 10. So it does require you to sit there and continuously gift them flowers but this is going to get them leveled up quicker than any other way being as you can't make them a buddy speaking of buddies that leads me to my next tip and that is to always bring a buddy with you for whatever task you are trying to complete at the time now i'm going to be going mining so i grabbed goofy who is my mining buddy and of course, you're going to want to grab the buddy that is specific to the task you're doing. So if you're going fishing, grab a fishing buddy. If you're going mining, grab a mining buddy. Because they are going to give you extra materials for the task that you are doing. So Goofy's just going to hang out with me. And apparently he's stuck somewhere because he just gave me some coal from afar. But as I'm mining, he's going to give me... A little bit extra every time I finish each mining node. He'll walk up to it and then go ahead and give me a little bit extra. Depending on how many buddies you have for that specific task, that is how much extra you will get from each node that you are working on. So if you have more mining buddies, you'll get extra material from mining if you have more fishing buddies you'll get extra materials or fish from fishing if you have multiple farming buddies you'll get extra crops and extra farming materials so whatever it is for that specific buddy you'll get extra of so as you can see in the top left corner my blue bar is a little low. Where, it, when we started, it was at yellow. Which brings me, you guessed it, to my next tip, which is to overfill your energy bar. And the way that we do that, for those of you new to the game, it is possible to get a little extra pep in your step by eating meals so cooking isn't completely useless now when my blue bar gets low i eat other things like berries 
I tend to go for gooseberries because they fill that bar up until the blue bar is completely filled. And then I will eat, I tend to make five star meals. I'll eat a five star meal to get that yellow energy bar going. And then you can run slightly faster. And I promise you, it doesn't seem like it makes a difference, but it absolutely does. The next thing I'm going to talk about is making money because it seems like everyone struggles to make money at some point and it's especially hard to make money when you are first starting off the game. The best way, in my opinion, to make money is through farming. As you unlock new biomes, you will unlock new crops to plant, new vegetables to get, and in my opinion, I think the best way to make money is pumpkins, but not everyone has that biome open right off the bat because you do have to save up Dreamlight in order to open the Forgotten Lands. But the pumpkins give you the best amount of money as you are going throughout the game. I've heard that folks really like to plant canola, they like to plant eggplant, there are all sorts of different ways and, and tricks that you'll find that work best for you, but I say do what's best for you and don't listen to what anybody else is saying that you have to do in order to make money. Do what you think is best based off of how much you play the game. I personally do not like farming. I hate planting crops. I hate picking crops. I hate watering crops. So pumpkins are the best for me because they take four hours to grow. And when it rains in my valley, that's when they get watered. I don't spend the time watering my crops. So again, do what's best for you. But farming is the best way to make money, in my opinion. And I'm saying that as someone who likes to hoard all of their other items for future quests. If you don't mind not hoarding items and you just want to sell everything then selling gems or selling forgeable items also helps you gain money. But making a lot of farm plots and farmland and selling crops is going to be your money maker in this game. Number nine is visiting Scrooge's shop every single day. Now, every day, Scrooge should have different items Lord, in his shop, but sometimes he tends to be a little bit stingy and will give you the same items over and over and over again, which is why I recommend to visit Scrooge's shop every oh, single day. I personally go to Scrooge's shop and I oh, buy him out of neighbor. everything in hopes that Bye -bye. he will give me something that I don't have Good the next day, day. Ah, but it is completely ah, random. Oh, All of the yeah, items oh, that come day. in oh, do not neighbor. have any type of day, routine dear. or... Ah, ah, ah specific way of popping up there's nothing that you can do to make newer items pop up like i said i try to buy him out of everything in hopes that something that i don't have will pop up for that day but as long as you are showing up every single day you could get lucky and one of those randomized rarer items could absolutely show up I always kick myself in the butt if I end up missing a day to show up just in case I might miss a rare item. But I do suggest you show up at least once a day just to buy Scrooge out of the items that he has. Now, the clothing items are a little bit different than the furniture items. Generally, the clothing items that show up in Scrooge's shop only show up one time. So once you purchase it, it will not show up again. Now, I have heard that this is glitched for certain folks, and they do see the same clothing items over and over again. That has not happened with me, and I play on the PS5. So as you can see in my front windows, there are no items here, and that is because I have bought Scrooge out of 
all of the window items that he has to offer. And when we walked in, there were no clothing items on this square right over here. And that is because I have bought Scrooge out of all of the clothing items that are available in this area. I only had clothing items available in this back shelf over here. And those are the items that we bought today. And as you saw, those were all new and they all popped up on the right hand side as I was purchasing them. So if your game is working properly, Scrooge should not restock any of the clothing items that you already have. But the furniture items will show up all the time, even if you have them or don't have them. Last but not least, my 10th tip is to change the time of day in the settings based off of what you prefer. I tend to prefer to play at night because I like the aesthetic of it. I like how it looks, especially with certain decorations that I have. So I tend to offset my time of day to the evening just because that is how I prefer to play. Now, I know that there are a lot of folks who can only play at nighttime and would prefer to have the daytime look. And all you have to do is go into your settings, go down to controls and offset that time of day in your settings. And you can go later hours, you can go earlier hours. It just depends on what you prefer to do. This is completely your preference and you can offset it however you'd like. It does not affect any of the quests and it does not affect any of your in-game play. Now, you should absolutely do this in your settings and not on your actual console because if you time travel, um, like if y'all are familiar with Animal Crossing and time traveling in Animal Crossing, all you had to do was change the time and date in your console and you would be able to change the days and it would affect the gameplay in Animal Crossing. But if you do that for Disney Dreamlight Valley, it will corrupt your game save and you will have to start your valley over if you wanted to continue playing the game. So do not time travel, just offset the time of day in your settings. And friends, that is going to be it for my little beginner's guide for Disney Dreamlight Valley. If this has helped you, please make sure to leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps my channel grow. I'll see you next time.